This video covers a few essentials necessary to get your salsa moves aligned with the music as quickly as possible. It is designed for those who have no background in either dance or music, so everything will be explained from the very beginning. We are going to talk about some important differences between the salsa music and the regular popular music. We will take a look at some of the easiest ways to hear the salsa rhythm. We are going to demystify the clave and we are also going to discuss some common pitfalls that a beginning salsa dancer should avoid. Ok, let's look at some of the differences. In pop music the rhythm is typically expressed by one dominant drumming pattern, which stays relatively constant and can be heard clearly throughout the song. It sounds something like this. You will find a drumming pattern similar to this in the vast majority of popular songs, from Britney Spears to Rick Astley. We are so accustomed to it that sometimes we think of it as the rhythm, and one of the difficulties for the salsa newcomer is that your brain automatically tries to find something like this in salsa music. It tries to find the beat. The problem is that there is no such beat in salsa, so the first step on the road to improvement is to stop looking for it. Instead of having one dominant rhythmic pattern, salsa music has many different rhythms that often play at the same time. Also, it is common for different rhythms to play in different parts of the song. Let's look at some of them. Here is the tumbao pattern that is played on the conga drum. Here is the repeated pattern called the montuno, which is typically played on the piano or the keyboard. And here is one of the rhythms played on the cowbell instrument. The challenging thing is that these are just three of at least a dozen or so commonly used rhythms, and each of them has its own variations. Given such a variety, it will certainly take time and practice to achieve a solid understanding. The best place to start is with the tumbao rhythm, which we will review in detail in just a moment. Right now, let's look at one more important distinction between pop music and salsa music. The dominant ingredient of a pop song is usually the melody. It's all about having that catchy tune. In salsa music, which has its roots in African drumming, the rich and layered rhythmic structure is just as important as the melody, if not more. One of the things that makes the salsa rhythm so difficult to understand is that it places the rhythmic accents in a way that is very unusual for a western listener. This is the clave rhythm that you probably heard so much about. The underlying rhythm that makes salsa music feel so different. It sounds like this. Notice that the clave rhythm is not symmetric. Two beats that are relatively quick are followed by three beats with slightly more distance in between. The musical phrase in a salsa song is written over eight beats, and the clave rhythm emphasizes counts two, three, five, the count between six and seven, and finally the eighth count. This lack of symmetry in the clave rhythm creates two unequal halves in each musical phrase. This gives salsa music that pulsating feeling of a rubber band that gets extended and tense and then contracts and releases the energy. The wavy motion of a salsa dance is a reflection of this non-symmetric structure that the clave provides. So in a way, you already feel the clave subconsciously as you move back and forth during the dance. The clave rhythm is sometimes played explicitly using an instrument which is also called clave. This is what we just heard earlier. More importantly though, the clave is the implicit rhythm around which all the other musical accents are arranged. In most salsa songs it is not played outright, but it is more of an underlying driving principle that governs and interrelates all the other rhythms that you actually do hear. This is a source of endless confusion for beginners since they are often told to listen for the clave and then they start thinking that they may be having hearing problems or like musical talent when they cannot hear the clave no matter how hard they try to strain their ears. Hearing the clave, or more precisely feeling the clave since it's often not played explicitly, 
is something that takes a lot of dedicated practice. Fortunately, to start dancing to the rhythm, you don't need to learn all of this right away. As long as you can hear the tumbao, which is much easier, you'll be able to understand the rhythm most of the time. Right now you're seeing and hearing the same thing, the tumbao rhythm, which is played on the conga drums. It consists of two deep strokes, one right after another, and then a single sharp click a little bit later. The two deep strokes occur between the counts 8 and 1, just before the count 1, or before the counts 4 and 5, just before the count 5. In practical terms, if you are dancing on 1, when you hear the two deep strokes, that's when you break forward or back. The sharp clicking sound occurs on 2 and on 6, and that would be the main signal for all of you dancing on 2. Now I will count out all the beats a couple of times so that you can double check your understanding. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this seems simple enough. Anyone can hear the deep double stroke on the sharp click. Why is it so difficult then to hear the salsa rhythm? The problem is that even the tumbao, strong as it is, often gets overwhelmed by everything else that's going on in a typical salsa song. Listen to this for example. In the fragment you just heard, the tumbao rhythm is clearly audible, but it can be quite difficult for a beginner to discern because it is pushed into the background by all the other instruments. Let's try a simpler example. I will provide the count again so you can see how the tumbao rhythm sounds in the context of a salsa song. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six. Note how in the previous example the musical phrase always begins in count one. This is important because in reality the tumbao rhythm sounds the same for the click that occurs on two and six and for the double deep stroke that occurs just before 1 and 5. So if you're dancing only to the tumbao, you may be dancing on 6 instead of on 2, without realizing it. To fix this, you would need to pay attention to where the musical phrase begins. This may take some practice. The best thing is to focus on being able to hear the tumbao reliably, and then refine your understanding a little bit later. Now let's review some of the common questions and problems that salsa beginners face. The first item we are going to discuss may be slightly controversial, but as an absolute beginner, it is very important to focus on dancing only to the rhythm, and not to the melody. In fact, you can often see that a person really likes the song when they get too much into it and fall out of step with the music. At more advanced levels in salsa, there are many ways of expressing the melody through styling vocabulary and learning how to match the intensity of figures to the music that you're hearing. And of course, a really experienced dancer is able to improvise the movements on the fly to express the melody. However, to get to these more advanced levels, the sense of salsa rhythm has to become fully automatic, like walking. Your body should be able to follow the rhythm completely without thinking. Which brings us to the topic of shines. A shine is an open footwork that the dancer executes on their own, without a partner. Many beginners feel bored during the shines part of the class, thinking, I'm never going to be part of any type of dance-off on the middle of the floor. This, however, is a misunderstanding of one of the main purposes of shines, which is to help the body internalize the rhythm, not necessarily to have a John Travolta moment, dancing by yourself to amaze the crowd. There is simply no way that as a beginner you can develop a good sense of salsa rhythm if you only dance in pairs. It is absolutely essential to learn at least three or four shines well so you can practice at home to internalize the rhythm. <laughs> 